What is going on, Chavez, Slovakia? <laughs> you upset? Are you ticklish? <laughs> what the fuck are you mad about, you little shit face? You told me we were here to watch Internet Historian. Yeah, eventually. This frown will not be flipped upside down until Internet Historian is in front of my... Yeah, he's got eyeballs. Eyeballs. It's like a protest of some sort, I'm not understanding. <laughs> There's violence involved. Fine, man in a cave. All right then, that's it, it's, it's on. That fast, just instantaneous. Internet Historian dropped another video, man in a cave. He also left a tweet. Can we pull the tweet up? We'll use green screens today. There's a tweet he put up that said he's got like a bunch of stuff coming out, like 11 videos total, I think, is the was the number. I haven't read it since I scrolled past it. I don't believe it. Three months for 11 vids? I think he's been instead been spending his money. Epstein Island style, but like for video games, just like smuggling in video games. Because he lives in New Zealand, or Australia, and they don't allow people to have fun there. Wait, it's Australia, not New Zealand. He's not a Kiwi? Isn't it the same thing, though, as far as we're talking about conservative censorship? When I remember the video, it seemed like man in a hole, and that seemed a lot more interesting. I have no clue what this is about. I'm hoping it's spooky, because it came out in October. Ah. I'm a liar. It came out the 29th. Whatever. Yeah, Let's it, get started. It came out behind before October. That's when we're watching it. Okay, maybe spelunking accident. What What's that movie called where they go spelunking, and then there's like demons down there? The cave? The cave. But man in front of it. Man cave. Let's just watch it and see what it happens. This is also an hour one, so if you need to go get a snack. Here we go. Can I go get a snack? <laughs> no. You never let me have snacks. We don't have any more snacks, actually. Have some snacks? Well, what do you got? Where are you? Keep them at your desk? No, you just don't like it because it's popcorn. No! We can't eat popcorn and shoot. It's too crunchy. Three, two, one, play. Ew. Why does it sound like that? Oh, shit. In the state of Kentucky, there is a cave. My grandparents live there. I like Kentucky. That every now and then demands a sacrifice. Oh, shit. What? History. January 30th, 1925. Oh, jeez. A man walks towards the cave with a kerosene lamp in his hand. Yeah, Jesus. He hangs up his jacket and ducks into a five-foot opening. Why? The inside of the cave is narrow. He has to drop down on his hands and knees, crawling through a passageway filled never. with jagged rocks and choking dust. Absolutely not. Then down a chute he had cleared out months earlier. Oh, he comes back. All of the daylight is gone from here, and this lantern is his only source of light. Mm -hmm. Ignoring the loose limestone rocks perched directly above him, he is now 100 feet in. Oh my God. And here he reaches the turnaround room. Now they call this the turnaround room because this is the juncture where even experienced cavers say, no thanks, right, and, and turn, turn around. around. <laughs> That's cool. Because yeah. to continue on means going through this. No. The squeeze. Well, never. A gap in the stone of only nine inches. My hair wouldn't even fit in I was about there. to say, how long is your head? Do we have a ruler around here? You're not going to measure my head. How long is your phone? On national TV. Dude, your head would not even fit. My wife's head is gigantic. Look how many phones it is. At least two phones tall, including your little buddy there. That's too tall. This is a good chance to bring up the fact that I might be claustrophobic. I've never tried, but this is no, stressing I me out. No, I am claustrophobic. I would never do this at all. For reference, he has a subway sub. Yeah, ah. right. Going through, he would look exactly like this. <laughs> His arms will need to be completely at their side, and he will need to exhale so that he can oh. reduce the size of his torso. Got it. That would work for me because I have a big stomach. Oh, you put the sad face. Bit by bit, he disappears into the hole. Like a snake. His clothes are caught on sharp gypsum crystals, hooking into him and threatening to hold him in place. But using his feet like paddles, he pushes through. He reaches a wider opening at the other side, then crawls. Terminated here is a 10 foot drop. A rope is already secured around a boulder, which allows him to rappel down. His worn-out leather shoes touch the ground. 
this is as far as he can go. And it is time for work to begin. Okay. What he is working on is another opening. At the moment, it's too small for anyone to fit through. But he will chip away at it until he can shove himself right through the other side. Why? Because on the other side is this. A magnificent and otherworldly cave structure that will be irresistible to tourists. Every day for months he has been removing rocks from this crevice. To him, this is all just routine. So he eases further into the gap. Carefully he contorts his body through. Rocks (gasps) compress the sides of his torso so close that his arms are pinned to the side of his body. He once again paddles his feet to inch down. Then, about halfway, he stops. Hmm, the lantern. It's starting to dim. He will need to go all the way back to the surface to refuel the thing. So he's one of those kind of people who like drives his car until it's like about to go empty. Except it's, it's his life he's playing with. Right. The, what, what is the... what? Sorry, he we'll continue. He slowly shuffles back out, pushing the lantern with his shoulder. Then, oh no, ding, crack, darkness. Yeah. He has knocked over the lamp and it has broken. Now the man didn't panic. He had been caught in the dark before and he could make his way back by feel alone. So he continues worming out, leveraging his foot against what he thinks is the cave wall. But that is not the cave wall. That is, in fact, a rock protruding from the ceiling. As soon as he puts his weight against the rock, it it breaks loose. A solid piece weighing 15 kilograms lands directly on his ankle. Oh my god! But he's okay. It doesn't feel as though his ankle is broken, just badly bruised and caught underneath the rock. So he shuffles to move the rock away. Suddenly, Mm. gravel. A lot of gravel. It falls onto his feet, his legs, his torso, and the weight of it all forces the wedged rock deeper into the gap underneath his foot. Holy shit. He tries to push forward. He cannot. He tries to inch backwards. He cannot. He is stuck. This is Sand Cave. This man is Floyd Collins. He is trapped in absolute darkness. 60 feet deep below the earth, all of his limbs held in place at the very bottom of this. Wow. Oh, you are dead. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. But before I tell you what happens next, ad ad time. Uh, you speak- <laughs> before we get to the ad time, uh, that's like the worst hug you could ask for. I'm like so stressed. My anxiety is like spiking right now. That's why it's hard to get you to open up. I'm showing them how I feel with well, the, with the guy. Yeah, use your words. I feel like this face speaks a million words, but I'm unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, let's get to the ad. It's not gonna make it better. No. Speaking of people trapped in a cave, World of Tanks. Ah, nice. World of Tanks is not only the best game I have ever played, it is the only game I have ever played. Okay. It's like cars, but tanks. Yeah. Picture this. You're a hot new T-3485M. What is that? And you've just joined tank. the battle because okay. some Cromwell B tank bagged your entire thing. <laughs> it's bag. time for a <laughs> bit. You must use strategy. You must use stealth. You must yeah. use your wits to defeat your enemies. Okay. Use long range or short range. Oh my god. It's available on console, but I want you to get it on PC. Oh, thanks. Imagine okay. a world war, but there are tanks involved <laughs> yeah. this time. Yeah. Yeah, now you get it. When you've seen as many messed up tanks as I have, you get a little cynical. Oh my, <laughs> my god. I'm going to be sick. <laughs> Look at all the different tanks. You can collectomize and customize them all. Baby massive yeah, tanks where you can constantly team kill and ruin other people's good time. Oh, that's <laughs> all you had to say. I'm on your f***ing 
Yeah! Did I mention it's historically accurate, especially the Japanese robot tanks? Oh look, the tanks are kissing. Progressive. Use the invite code TANKMANIA and get the Excelsior. 250k credits. Other stuff. Go to the link in the description Tank and use Mania. the invite code TANKMANIA. Here's what you do. Give World Tanks. Uh -huh. Put that on one screen. Uh -huh. Then, on a second monitor, uh -huh. you watch the next hour of this video right. while you play the game. Yeah. Perfection. That I sounds very tempting. Yeah, actually, though. I yeah. need something to distract me from the trauma. Really obliged to say, thank you for being a friend. Sarge, no! Thank you for being Tanks a friend. Empty, kid. Go on without me. <laughs> no, use your repair consumable. It's too late, it's kid. Take care of my family. Hey, Thank care. It's a little buff baby. Whose buff child is that? <laughs> He's on the roids. No. no. Get it, 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 get it. Add or Thanks. Got it. Collins is still in the All dark, right. unable to move. His left arm was pinned underneath his torso, his right wedged by the rock ceiling above. Beneath him, sharp crystal shards dug into his skin. Oof. Ice thawed, traced across the ceiling, and dripped down directly onto his face. That's literally a type of torture. Yeah pooling underneath him. The water was a consistent 54 degrees. Oh my, it's cold as Floyd shit. tried to breathe calmly in the concentrated dark. When he did attempt to shuffle, more gravel and rocks would tumble from above and pile onto his feet. So nothing would work. He clawed at the cave walls till his fingertips were bloody, uh, and he realized that there was only one option left. Die. Call out for help. But wait, 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 wait. wait. How would that Who is Floyd? And why did he even go into a dangerous right. cave? Right, what is the background? Floyd has been exploring the caves of Kentucky since he was merely six years old. Okay. Somebody should have bought him a comb at some point. And as he grew up, he gained a reputation for being a very daring caver. Uh-huh. He would dive into some hole on one side of town and emerge miles away on someone <laughs> else's property. <clears throat> Sup? He grew up and he became embroiled in the... Kentucky Cave Wars. What? What is now, there's that? way too much to go into here, but the summary version is there's this huge network of interconnected caves called Mammoth Caves. It's actually the largest cave system in the world. Wow. And there's a city right in the middle of it uh -huh. Cave City, real name. So, of course, there are dozens of cave entrances on private property all over the place. Right. Mammoth Cave Baptist Church? Is that real? You just fuck it with me. I'm Googling it later. Now, farmland in this region has very poor soil, and things do not grow well here. Right. So, cave tourism as a source of income quickly became the prominent thing. Makes sense. However, a problem. There are a very large number of caves, but there are only a limited number of tourists. Right. So, competition rapidly escalated. Visit my cave. No, no, no. Visit my cave. Big signs were erected saying, Ah, tourists, come to me. Ah, mine is definitely open. Mine is the best. But then competitors would respond by saying, Hey, by the way, we're open, but don't go to that one over there. It's really shitty. <laughs> In fact, it's dangerous. <laughs> this kept going further. By the end, they were blocking off the trail to each other's oh property, beating each other in the streets, and hiring people called cappers who would dress up as policemen and tell Taurus, no, 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 you can't go in there. That one, <laughs> no, it's illegal. That's hell of a Despite the fierce competition, Floyd found a cave on his property and he started advertising it to tourists. Of course, very few came. All right, he thought. What if I found something really special and unique? Ah. Then surely people would have to come to my cave to see it. So he kept exploring and exploring until he found this hollow. It that was filled sick. with big gypsum crystals. And when you were in there, it felt like a completely alien world. Right. But it Haven. was barely accessible. This small tunnel is the only way right. in. Right, and I'm not going in he there. He would need to dig for months to open it up to tourists. But he knew he could do it. Back to the competition. They right. knew the value of this cave. They knew the potential. They wanted it for themselves. And they wanted Collins gone. Oh. One time, five of them just wandered onto Floyd's property and demanded he hand over the lease. Wow. When he refused, they beat just started beating the shit out of him. <laughs> this only stopped when Floyd's brother, Homer, marched out with a shotgun and chased them all off. Why didn't you do that when they started beating his ass? He was taking a little nappy. Right, nap. like why? <laughs> he was taking a little sleepy sleep. You just like let him get beat up. In like... the dream, he was punching a Nazi and he woke up like, wait a minute, there are no Nazis in Kentucky. 
But Floyd was not deterred. He spent 12 hours a day, every day, for months, clearing gravel and stone, chipping away at that passage. He would open it up to tourists, make his cave an incredible attraction, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and make his dreams come true. Under new management, even. Hey! Wow. Is anyone there? So there's Floyd in the dark, yelling out for help. He's at the start of a very tiring loop. Sleep, wake, yell. Sleep, wake, yell. Hours passed. His voice gave in. Arms tingled numb. Pain radiating up his ankle. Here he remained in the dark for the next 23 hours. Where was your brother? Your your brother fucking sucks. (laughs) Turned off. Yeah. Quickly you might wonder... How come no one's come for him after 23 hours? I am not wondering. My wife is wondering that. I am not. I'm not climbing in no goddamn cave. I would never look for you in there. You're dead. The start of it is six inches. I just feel like if you're going to go... I'd be wedged. Impossible. I... <laughs> I just feel like if you're going into this deep, dark cave right. in which there's limited space and limited ways to get out, Yeah. first of all, you should have like a rope tied to you and then tied to something outside of the cave, right? Like a bell. You like pull it ding a ling a ling Yeah. Ling. But two, just mention something like, hey, I'm going into the cave from which, you know, return might be difficult. So just... You know, if you don't hear from me for a while... Just, I'm dead. Just check on me. Nobody is going in there to get you. Dr. D would come get me. Dr. D definitely couldn't fit through that t- little entrance. Why not? Her titties are gigantic. Wow, I didn't think you were going to say it. Why would I not say that? I can't talk about another woman's titties in front of me. It's not a woman. It's Dr. D. <laughs> Play the video. Sure. <laughs> well... Sand Cave resides on a 200-acre farm. Oh my God! There are several homes on this property with other families. One of them, of course, is Colin's house, where Floyd's father, Lee, resides. Now, Lee and Floyd constantly get into fights about how to run things. Mm -hmm. Lee wants his son to concentrate on farming, Mm -hmm. and Floyd wants to concentrate on cave tourism. Mm -hmm. Arguments would often get deeper. And Lee was also a bit of a drunk. Mm. It was doubtful that he would even notice if his son Floyd you was son missing. Of a bitch. Also not helping things, Floyd regularly lodged at two other homes on the farm. Wow. So when he didn't return to one host, Nobody's paying they would attention. presume that he was staying with the with other. The other. Oh. And even worse than that, he had recently spent 30 hours in a cave. So disappearing <laughs> for this length of time wasn't seen as abnormal. Damn it. Regardless, around the 23-hour mark, worst case a scenario. few locals started to suspect that, hey, something might be wrong, and they went to check up on him. And here, they spotted his jacket oh, still right. hung up. So, Unusual. Yeah. They went deeper. However, there was only one person small enough to make it exactly. as far as the turnaround room. This was a 17-year-old oh. Jewel Estes. He Local refused team. to go into the squeeze, I would but too. he was close enough to call Colin's name. And Collins yelled back. (laughs) So they do know he's confirmed at 23 hours. For God's graces, they actually found out he was down there. Yes. Okay. Istis emerges from the cave. Okay, we know he's trapped, and we know where he is. So, locals started to gather outside. Out of my way. Say a bunch of men who would each show up and take turns heading into the cave in an attempt to reach Collins. But once they reached the turnaround room... Nope. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. They would fail to reach him. Emerging from the cave, soaked in mud and cursing. Out of my way, they would say as they were heading in the (laughs) reverse direction. So a few more hours passed. Word would spread around town. Dozens of locals from Cave City started to gather outside. Oh my god! Over in Louisville, Floyd's 22-year-old brother, Homer, 
he gets a phone call. Oh, he doesn't uh, hello? live there. I see. Got it. Ah, my brother. He's trapped in a cave. I'm on my way. Why is his brother so tan? <laughs> Different moms, probably. Yeah. Homer jumps on a coach and makes his way to Floyd's cave. How long does that take? A long ass time. Got it. Ah! Homer struts up to the scene. Dozens of men are standing around outside. He ignores them all and marches right into the cavern, still wearing his city clothes. He makes his way in, down the chute, through the narrowing passages, down on his hands and knees towards the turnaround room. insane. And when he arrives, he does not hesitate. Yeah. <gasps> he squeezes into the hole, Ooh. scrambles his way through to the ledge oh on the God. other side. He sees Floyd below and slides down. Wow, to meet he... Him. Floyd! Sup? No, probably wasn't that casual. <laughs> oh, thank God you're here. Homer took a moment to shine his light around the area and assess the situation. It was not good. Yeah. This rock formation is going to prove almost impossible to work around. Right. All right, so let's have a look. Fuck. Floyd is here. The rock is uh. here, pinning his ankle. He's surrounded by rubble, and there's a pocket of gravel rubble above him, him ready to fall. However, because this opening is so small, there are only two viable ways of reaching Floyd and that gravel. Option one, the most obvious, feet first. Feet first. Exactly. But if you do this, you, can't, you, you have can't to kind of squat, and your own torso obstructs access to yeah. the rubble. Otherwise, option two, head first. come down head first. That will give you better well, access, you can't get back but up. you're trying to move hundreds of pounds of gravel upside down it's not going to be fast enough especially if you're one person you're not going to get him out fast enough he's already been down there for two days he's not going to live worse yet there's barely an inch around collins on either side so good luck getting your arm down near floyd's right. ankle to actually free him from the wedged rock right. homer calls back to the less daring rescuers standing behind him quickly some food and drink oh it's starting to get to me in my head every time they have the person like move around yeah that there would actually be an impossibly small amount of room to do yeah. that in i would not be able to handle that they send it through he hand feeds his brother a pint of coffee and a total of nine sausage sandwiches feeling better much better then homer food. went to task I was gonna say, he gonna began make removing himself? rocks and gravel tiny scoop at a time with the help of an old syrup can Wow. Yeah. What the heck? For the next eight hours he toiled, first with hands, then, once enough was cleared, using a crowbar to scoop behind his brother, scraping away sharp protrusions as he went. It was slow progress. Virtually futile. As soon as he removed one rock or a scoop of gravel, it would another would down. tumble from above and land in the new absence. And you have no idea how much is up there. Right. Yeah. You're like, you're hoping eventually it'll end, but you don't know. Yeah. And it was exhausting work. By sunrise, Homer's arms and back were knackered. His lungs burned. He was losing hope. Homer emerged hours later, shivering violently, skin bruised from his fingertips. Man. But the cave barely yielded at all. However, something new. By the time Homer reached outside, he was greeted by a sea of approximately 100 men and women standing around, drinking, squabbling, and talking big game about how they too were going to save Floyd. Mm -hmm. The press was also present to help people gawk from afar. How is this not infuriating? Sorry, we're going to continue, but I would be yeah, this, heated. Yeah. Now, Homer recuperated at a small tent near the cave's mouth. Wow. Strangers immediately crowded around him to ask innocent, but frankly, frustrating right. questions. Right. And offer unsolicited, obvious advice, as well as wildly impractical solutions. Well, you see, you know, what I would do is dig them out. Right. Well, well, what about if you use a can to pull out the gravel? Yeah. yeah well, so, so what you got to do is get down in there and mm. pull him. If you, did you check to see if he was thirsty? You tried jangling it? <laughs> or finagling it? Have you tried asking him to move his feet? Mm, have you told the cave to stop it? Hey, stop that. <laughs> Crushing my brother to death. He should try untying his shoes, said one. Ah, uh, no, we should send him down with a contortionist who's got a mallet and a chisel. 
Ah, we, we should jerk him off. Right, guys? <laughs> All right, I made that third guy up. But you get the idea. And they started to argue with each other oh about the plans. Oh, my God! Hey, how about using dynamite? One click formed, insisting that it was a great idea. And another saying, no, 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 the explosion will kill him. Right. And the weight of the new rocks will surely crush him. Right. They fought for a while until they started arguing about gas torches, which will cook him or asphyxiate him, or the gas will poison him. Right. But by far the most common suggestion, of course, was amputation. Yeah. Never mind that the foot itself how? was unreachable. Right. Like, how and never mind what off? the blood loss and shock would do to Floyd's weakened body. Mm -hmm. And never minding even more that Floyd was strongly reluctant to the idea. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't cut my foot off. All of the squabble would not have gotten on Homer's nerves, except that not one of them would just brave the damn right, cave just go and help. continue shoveling away the gravel. The formula was always Useless. the same. Brave heroes go in with food and supplies, then reach the turnaround room and immediately <laughs> lose their nerve, then dump the food just outside the hole, oh and then God. return back outside and go, oh, absolutely. No, he says, thanks for the food. Thank you so much. <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> no one would go through that wow. space. Dozens more men would... Oh, it's, t it's actually horrifically small. Yes. No one yeah. would go through that squeeze. Yeah, that's the... Whole, okay, actually, no. they, they might be on to something. No. He's fucking dead. But let's continue. Holy Dozens shit. more men would try. All of them would fail. <laughs> February 2nd, 9 a.m. So far, Homer has been the only person to have reached Floyd. And that would continue to be true until... Here we are at the Louisville Courier. There's a spirited young newshawk named William Miller. <laughs> he's talking to his boss, and he's trying to convince him that it's a great idea for him to cover the story of the man trapped in the cave. Listen up, boss. I'm hearing talk of a man in a cave. He's stuck <laughs> down there, and I want to get down there, too. Get to the nitty-gritty, you hear? This is an like opportunity that. for some good PR, Miller. I'm in. But I want us to sponsor that rescue. Picture this. Man saved from cave by Louisville Courier, the finest newspaper in the state. That'll drum up plenty of business. Actually, 24 what? carat idea, yeah. boss. I'll make it happen. I'll get down there too sweet. So off Miller goes to Floyd's cave. Bam, bam, Back over bam. at the cave, Homer is sitting outside trying to recuperate as Miller wanders up. He glares at the man in his city clothes and answers every question with either a grunt or a one-word answer. Eh. Yeah. Sure. Finally, he gestures to Sand Cave. Listen, you want more information? Get the in hole's there. right behind me. Why don't you go take a look yourself? Now, Miller is only 21, but he is a slender and determined man. He takes on the challenge. I like the slender. So he removes his suit, drapes himself in coveralls, yeah. take it and grabs off. a lamp. Take it Miller off. slowly oh. enters the cave. He finds himself stepping in puddles and having to correct his balance against the ever softening walls. These were accumulating problems thanks to the gawkers outside who had lit campfires all around the entrance. Yeah. That caused snow melt and the stable environment of the cave is starting to shift. I was wondering about that because I keep thinking in my head that it is a soft rock. You know what I'm saying? Which means that the actual place that it's in is really sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering when you just put a bunch of people out there that are digging holes around yeah. and like... If that's affecting it, and it's good to see that it actually is. Right. Yeah. I have an idea. Okay, can can we wait till he's done, see if he goes in or not? Take a small child. Mm-hmm. Cover the small child in oil. Mm-hmm. Put the small child down there. Children have endless amounts of energy. What made you think of that? <laughs> well, because they were saying nobody was, like, small enough. Did they didn't know. They they're not bold enough. They well, can't all children make... Children are very bold. You saw the kids but at the Mil wedding yesterday. They're very bold. Miller makes it further than most. And all that's left is that final squeeze. Go! And he's there. He stops. He takes a moment and decides to call out to Floyd. Floyd! Hearing there is someone on the other side, he feels ashamed not to try. So he closes his eyes and moves forward. Wow. Oh, wow. His slender figure begins inching through. The crystal gypsum Oof. cuts into his elbows Oof. and tugs at his clothes. He gets snagged. He's spluttering through the pools of muddy water. He stops, collects himself, 
and pushes on. He can barely inhale. If he gets stuck in here, he can only hope that someone else can come in from behind and pull him out by the legs. But eventually, he makes it through. It's big enough. Fantastic. He's now standing on the edge of a 10-foot pit, and he clumsily bumbles his way down. Sir, please. He sat right next to Floyd, ready to interview him. Sir! But Floyd didn't really answer any of his questions. In fact, he was incoherent. Yeah. At the moment, he is sitting in a pool of water that is 12 degrees, slowly sapping his body temperature. He is dying from exposure. The cold is diminishing Floyd's mental faculties, and he can barely make sentences. So Miller took a few mental notes, and he left. He worked his way back through the squeeze, past the turnaround room, and out into the daylight. He is covered in mud and scratches (sighs) and numb head to toe. And when Homer saw... (gasps) His hope reignited. Someone else had made it to Floyd. You and me, together, we can get Floyd out of there. I guess he's down. If Miller hadn't gone to that cave, there's a good chance that Floyd's story would have remained an obscure footnote in the back pages. But the interviews and first-person accounts gave the audience a glimpse of something real. Fear, hope, desperation, the full range. And so, from Los Angeles to New York, Floyd's story was picked up everywhere and described the Kentucky man's plight in sensational detail. It was also the era when radio became a regular feature for regular Americans. Radio allowed something new. Hourly updates. Mm -hmm. Allowing kids to know what the impact radio had is probably like, it's kind of how we felt about like the telegram. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're covering your face in fear. Distress. I know. Letting people I know. get engrossed doing well. into the story. So, mostly thanks to Miller, the story of Floyd over the next week would grow and grow. Okay. Seemingly frothing over into every aspect of American life. The press at large would be clamoring over each other for every little extra scrap of detail they could get about Floyd. And everybody wanted to know, will this man make it? You know, it's like the story seems familiar, but I've never heard it. It just seems to have that pace of like a classic survival story. Right. Of, you know, people stuck in a log cabin, the winter's coming in. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Like like the hundred and twenty seven <laughs> hours guy. Exactly. Um those people those people trapped in a cave in what, Chile? Mm-hmm. Chile or what? Back outside the cave, someone new enters the scene. Okay. Lieutenant Robert Bird. A thin but strong 33-year-old Louisville firefighter. Like Miller, he was able to navigate the passages of the cave and brave the squeeze. Scratched up pretty good and drenched in cold, muddy water, he managed to get through. He grabbed the rope and confidently lowered himself to Floyd's position. It was not an optimistic sight. Floyd's condition was deteriorating. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a heck of a problem here, but I think I can get you out with a rope. Floyd nods in approval. Go on. We might just pull your bloody leg off. Just pull my leg off then. Get me out of here. Right. Burden returned to the surface and faced the crowd. He announced, We will attempt a rope pull. The crowd murmured. It was dangerous. It would certainly break his foot and could altogether pull it off. Mm -hmm. If there are jagged rocks, you'll fill it, the poor man. Amongst the crowd, a doctor stepped forward. A rope pull could stretch his internal organs and cause them to rupture. Definitely. You'll kill him. But Floyd is dying of exposure down there. The situation is becoming desperate. Burden put caution to the side. The time for strategy is over. Now we try brute force. Gotta get him out. Oh my god. That's too long, man. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. Why would you, why did y'all do that? Sorry, we'll, we'll start again. Sorry, I, I got scared. That was horrific. I know. This is actually terrifying. That's the rock. It's got a leg hook. Uh, Whose eye is that? Uh, Lloyd! 
Floyd. Yeah, yeah. We're here. We're going to get you out of here. After 79 hours in the cold water, he is delirious, fading in and out of consciousness. Homer gave his brother some coffee and fed him a couple of ham sandwiches. That warms him up and gives him a bit more energy, and he comes back to lucidity. Oh, much better. I'm gonna put the special harness around you. Burton and Miller, they're here too. We got three more boys right up the cave, and they're all ready to pull as hard as they can to get you out of here. This sounds like a terrible decision. Not gonna lie. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. Oh, yeah. He gave his brother some whiskey and a strong sedative to calm his nerves, and also to help him withstand the shock in case Mm -hmm. his foot is destroyed. Floyd took the opportunity to appreciate being surrounded by friends and family. Go on, do it. All right, strap him up. Homer tied the harness around Colin's chest and knotted the rope. Ready? Above, Miller is crouched at the top of the pit. Ready? Burden clenches the cord from further up the cave. This can go so bad. Three. The rope goes taut. Two. Do it. Oh, no, no, no. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Instinctively, Floyd gasps. The force of six men pulled against the clutches of the cave. Yeah. Floyd began to scream. His body was being pulled up from the rubble. The gravel was beginning to shift. Yeah. Burden clenched his teeth. Oh, harder! Floyd screamed harder as well. Now, Floyd was trapped in a supine position. But the direction of the it's rope going up. caused an upwards force yeah. that wrenched him vertically. Yeah. His torso was being compressed and bent against yeah. the ceiling of the trap. It would kill him. Floyd's screaming intensified, and through gasps was begging them to stop. The screams filled the echoing cave, but it did not stop. The agony continued. On and on, with no progress. Wow. Enough! Enough! You guys are killing him! Homer pulled in the opposite stop. direction to give his brother some reprieve. Somehow, Homer mustered the strength to altogether wrench the cord from the other men's hands. Wow. The rope went slack. Homer, Floyd, and the rope lay limp on the cave floor, panting and exhausted. No progress had been made. Yeah. Well. The cave would not let this man go. The futility of the situation sank in, and all they could do was leave for now and reassess. Everybody was shaken by the experience. Burden fainted as he crawled towards the exit. Most of the other men had to be carried away. Outside, the crowd had grown to 200. They buzzed and asked useless questions, and Homer walked dejectedly past them. He sat by thinking what he could do. The cause seemed hopeless. Homer? Then, someone showed up who could turn things around. He looked up to see a childhood friend of both his and Floyd's, Johnny Gerald. Okay, come on, Gerald. Gerald knew more about cave rescues than most. Okay. In fact, just that summer prior, he had helped untangle Floyd from a different snag. Okay. He was just the man for the job. All right. All right, let me go see him. Well, look who it is. (laughs) Floyd perked up immediately. Yay. Thrilled to see (laughs) Gerald. All right, let's see what we can do. Gerald jumped down. For the next three hours, Gerald went back to the original plan right, of prying away rocks. Yeah. His stamina was good, and progress was surprisingly good as well. Okay. For several more hours, he continued, just moving stone after stone. New one would fall in his place, and he'd move that one too. By midnight, he had enough room to shift position and clear some of the gravel that was at each side of Floyd's body. Okay. Gerald would spend several more hours scooping, and it worked. For the first time, Floyd's torso was now available. Then his hips, his upper thigh. For the first time in over 90 hours, Floyd was able to wiggle his arms, his hips, and even that trapped right leg, though it was very painful to do. In that one session, Gerald managed to move a half ton of rock. But there was still a lot more to go. And that rock by his foot was still holding him in place. By 2 a.m., Gerald was spent. Right. Of he course. needed rest. And he was ready to head back outside. Oh no. Floyd, tomorrow you're gonna be a free man. That's awesome. Now here you might think that things will become straightforward. Right. No. They did not. No, they did not sound like Now that, that that space had been cleared, Burden became convinced that if he oh, could get down no. that passage again, he could free Floyd with another rope pull. Fate deciding with both feet or just one. But when Burden tried to enter the cave again, 
he was sternly rebuffed by the locals. They were playing gatekeeper. Mm. Got it. They had been specifically instructed to not let anyone in, and they were especially opposed to Bird in making another rope pull after word spread about the disaster of the first attempt. Mm -hmm. He tried to reason with them. Let me try the rope pull again. It'll work this time. They wouldn't let up. Instead, they shouted obscenities and shoved him in the other direction. Oh, wait! Meanwhile, Gerald and Homer are incapacitated with exhaustion, and Miller was busy filing some paperwork for the Louisville Courier. Nobody else had the ability or the authority to take action, so Floyd spent all of that morning alone. Hello? Is anyone there? Help! Man, if he just would have went down there and just helped dig, could you imagine, you know? Anyone out there? Mm. Word spread about Floyd. Miller's reporting had been picked up by the AP Newswire, and they distributed it amongst their hundreds of partnered newspapers. For Miller, it would be the biggest moment of his career. But he didn't stop to pay it mind. He spent the day hatching a rescue plan. Oh, good. Miller descended into the cave and set to work. When he entered, he found that the team before him had strung light bulbs all through the cavern. Oh, that's fantastic. Leading all the way down to Floyd. Very handy. A bulb was also put around Floyd's neck to keep him warm and make sure that he was never again left in the dark. Right. That's so nice. Miller popped down to Floyd. Ah, Floyd! Fancy seeing you here, buddy. Reusing that syrup tin, he started offloading gravel into buckets. Those buckets were then passed up and down the cavern. Excellent. And so it went on for the next two hours. Miller stopped for a break. He took some bread, milk, and whiskey. And sharing it with Floyd, they started to get to talking. Floyd had been in that cave for over 100 hours. And seeing everyone working together, Floyd was overcome with a sense of hope and relief. And so he began spilling his heart out to Miller. Here is what he is quoted in the newspaper. Okay, here we go. I believed I would go to heaven. I can feel that I'm to be taken out alive and with both my feet. Wow. I kept thinking, what would happen if the rock above me would fall? It caused me to shudder. I kept thinking to drive my mind to something else, but it wasn't much use. I couldn't do much to help those who came to help me, but I knew that a lot of people were willing to do all in their power. It gave me courage. Tuesday morning, I thought to myself, four days down here and no nearer freedom than I was on the first day. Mm -hmm. How will it end? Will I get out? I couldn't think of it. I have faced death before. It doesn't frighten me, but it is so long. Mm -hmm. Tell them I am not going to give up. Tell them I'm going to fight and be patient and never forget them. This is so heavy. Meanwhile, Floyd's story kept growing. Pedestrians would gather around corner store windows to read the latest bulletins. The press began using giant typefaces, commonly only reserved for declarations of war. Wow. Churches in all of the nearby counties were holding services for Floyd. Theaters even interrupted their shows to update the audience. Oh, Jesus. Now, at the time, President Coolidge was in charge. Oh, my goodness. I always forget about Calvin Coolidge. Oh, I wrote a paper. I wrote a 30-page paper about Calvin Coolidge. Oh, my God. My teacher said it's impossible because he didn't do anything. Right. How did you do it? (laughs) Double-spaced? No, no, single space. Single, no, get yeah. the fuck out of here. <laughs> I, know, I know, I believe in laissez-faire government. You're uh-huh. so impressive. But the point is, that means nothing happened. And his secretary... Wait a minute. That is why I've heard of this fucking thing before. The theory of commerce was a geologist. That makes sense. Herbert Hoover. Now, Mr. Hoover followed the story very closely. And so, it was likely that the president did too. Even Congress paused session to ask about the latest news from Sam Cave. By the end, the Floyd Collins incident would explode into the third largest non-political story between World War I and World War II. Interesting. All of this excitement brought an inundation of people to Cave City. Old population, 690. Yawn. New population, 
10,000. God, God damn! Hotels well, ran out of food. Yeah. Residents turned their homes into makeshift hotels, right. charging sizable premiums to let people nap in their bathtubs. Oh my God. The banks quickly ran out of on-hand cash, and 4,500 automobiles impatiently sat, backed up for two miles from 20 different states Jesus. to drive onto the Collins Farm and turn their pristine green pastures into swampy oh, I know his daddy's pissed. Deep below all those tourists, there's Miller, trying to free Floyd. All right, a little bit of setup. Okay. Floyd, Miller, some remaining rubble, rock. For anyone to lift the rock by hand would be impossible mm -hmm. because Floyd's body obstructs mm -hmm. the hole. Miller grabs a crowbar and shoves it through the gap. <gasps> now he's going to lever it off Floyd's foot. All right. Cool. The crowbar is now wedged against the rock. Next, he takes a jack. He that? positions it mm -hmm. on top of the crowbar so that it will be forced oh, against the ceiling. However, problem. Yeah. That jack is too big. It doesn't fit. Fuck. Miller yells up the tunnel for a smaller one, but this took some time. And when it arrived, too small. Oh won't reach my the ceiling. God. But instead of sending for another one, Miller takes two blocks of wood and bolsters them underneath the crowbar. That's not right, going to so work. The crowbar now sits higher, it fulcrums against the blocks, and the jack is sitting on top. All oh, Miller has to do is expand the jack, which he will do using this spanner, holding it at the oh. very tips of his fingers. Sounds easy. No. It's not. No. But that's the plan. Let's get him out of there. The wood, isn't the wood gonna sink into the ground? I don't know. Turned the wrench, the jack expanded, and the crowbar took strain. The whole thing slid ah. apart with a pang. Floyd wasn't hurt, but Miller was contorting and exerting his whole body from back to fingertip. They tried again, same result. Miller tried a new angle, maybe this time. The jack pressed. Wow. The tension increased. Wow. And this time, the rock moved. It fucking moved. With each turn, the stone shifted a little more. Miller's hands shook with adrenaline, okay. his face and body okay. dripping with sweat. Pang. Oh my One of the blocks God. slipped, and the wooden tower went sideways. The rock painfully slammed back down on Colin's foot. You didn't wedge anything between it, dude? Oh, how could you, though, because it's so we far. Can't. Oh. Ah, go get it next time, Miller. Try again. Miller did. Again. And again. Adding blocks. Taking them away. New crowbar position. Change oh the jack position. God. Every angle. All while Floyd was there, cheering him on. Yay. <laughs> oh my God. For the next four hours, he tried. Yeah, that makes sense. No progress. Miller was exhausted. He couldn't do this on his own but he was the only one slim enough to get in through the gap. The group decided to concede for now and return to the surface. They would take just a small break, but it looked to everyone like there was a clear way to get this man out. Okay. So Miller and Burden crawl back through the mud and the winds of the cave. As they made their way through, the cave was visibly sagging. What? The ceiling seemed lower. Parts were harder to navigate than before especially now with their bruised and purple hands. But they made it outside to the fresh early morning air. And here is where they're greeted with a new sight. Uh -huh. Dozens of soldiers. The National Guard Oh, dear had God. In addition to the National Guard, a new figure was joining the story, Henry Carmichael. Now, Carmichael no was the general superintendent of the Kentucky Rock Asphalt Company. He had been on site since Tuesday, and he was appalled at how primitive the rescue attempts had been. Shortly after Miller and co. had exited, Carmichael sent two men into Sand Cave to assess the structure's stability. They soon came back with a report. It was not good. No. Near the final squeeze, large cracks had formed. The ceiling was beginning to droop. Right. Oh Alright, so the following is a recounting of events from one of Carmichael's men. Casey Jones. Okay. <clears throat> Casey and another worker spent about an hour in the cave, surveying its condition, looking at the boards, the ceiling, mm -hmm. the stability of the walls. Mm -hmm. He continued deeper towards Floyd. He was fighting against his nerves. The shifting of the rock pinged his every instinct to flee. Yeah. But he heard Collins moaning ahead, so he pushed himself on. He managed to make it through the squeeze, and he arrived at the 10-foot pit. Seeing Floyd trapped, 
He tried to ignore the pebbles that were tumbling behind him. Please, come down. Uh, I can't right now, Floyd, but I will when I get back. Behind Casey, his partner is begging to leave. Below Casey, Collins is pleading for help. Please, I'm so thirsty. Okay. <gasps> Casey slid headfirst into the pit and hastily ladled Floyd some coffee. Uh, Floyd rejected it. No, no. Rumbling intensified from above. Oh, and wow. in that moment, Casey realized that this was not a plea for sustenance. Floyd knew that a cave-in was inevitable. Oh. Scared and approaching his fifth day trapped, he was completely at his wit's end. He knew he was about to be trapped in that cave, and he didn't want to be trapped. Right, alive. Alone. Oh, alone. For God's sake, Casey, come on, you'll get us killed. Stay with me, please, don't leave. Oh, wow. Casey looked into Colin's eyes, set the coffee down, and pulled himself out of the pit. Uh. He wiggled underneath the sagging ceiling and crawled towards the turnaround room as fast as his limbs could scramble against the cave walls. He looked back to see the passage closing oh, like a morgue. Are you serious? Reflections from the bulb shining around Floyd's neck were no longer visible. Oh. Instead, just sobs could be heard, muffled from behind the rocks. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is so awful. So now he's stuck down there, very much alive. I thought he was asking... For like, to be... Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought, but he was just trying to get someone else to be down there with him. Oh, Jesus. He's desperate, though. He's desperate. Oh, they're playing his voice in there. I thought somebody was in their house. No, it's just... Miller and Don awoke in the late morning, confident that today would be the day that they saved Floyd. They had some new equipment, too. Nobody woke Some wire up to wrap them. around the wooden blocks to prevent them from slipping. And they changed their mind about that acetylene torch. They'll use it to burn away two rocks that had previously blocked their way. But when Miller got to the turnaround mm -hmm. room, all of that optimism left him. They never told them. The entrance to the squeeze was now just a pile of debris. Miller froze, staring at it for a long while. Then he sighed and did the only thing he could think, attempt to move some of the stones. But each adjustment led to more rocks just tumbling down and landing in that space. He persisted until... Crash. A large chunk of Get clay landed onto his feet. Recognizing the danger, Miller returned to the surface. Fifteen minutes later, he emerged from the cave with a bloodied up nose and bruises down his back and shoulders. Burden caught sight and races over to him. Miller just says, For God's sake, just don't let Homer or anyone else back in there. Now, he didn't actually need to worry about Homer going back in there because he was sidelined with illness. Mm -hmm. But he did, however, need to worry about Gerald because he was furious. Gerald had warned everyone that putting dozens of people in Sand Cave would cause a collapse. It certainly did. The rest of that day would be wasted as men threw blame around and screamed at each other about how to handle the cave. -in. And Floyd spent the rest of that day Alone. Oh my god. The surveyors continued so checking stressful. the cave throughout the day. By the evening, Carmichael had ordered everyone to an assembly. Gerald took the floor. He was going to try one last daring rescue. Okay. He boldly announced his plan and an ultimatum. Listen up. There's death down there. The walls and ceilings are crumbling. Yeah. Unless you're determined to take the biggest chance you ever took in your life, tell me now and stay outside. Next, they told all the Gorkas to get the fuck out of the cave, right. clear off. And over the next eight Ooh. hours, Gerald would enter and leave Sand Cave at least five times, chipping away at that pile of debris. In the woods, men sawed trees and chopped logs to shore up the cave walls. Okay. That's what I was wondering, yeah. the crew reinforced cracks and wobbling boulders with fresh strips of wood. Good, good, good. Gerald assessed that about four barrels of rocks would need to be moved, and piece by piece, they made that happen. Oh, my God. Steadily, they managed to move enough rock to allow Gerald to get within earshot of Floyd. Hey. Hello. I need food. Bad news. We can't reach you, but hold on, we're coming. Stone by stone, they continued. Right. Okay. After a few hours, the light of the bulb around Floyd's neck 
was peeking through. Yes. And that's only if there's enough room still, though, to get down that 10 foot drop. Yeah. You know? A couple more Oof. hours? Enough room for Gerald to squeeze through. Okay, that's enough. Floyd, I'm going for now. But when I get back, I'm gonna get oh, you out of there. Oh, this poor man. Exhausted but still determined, Gerald crawled back up the cave and marched to the men huddling outside. Gather the equipment, and in an hour's time, it's gonna be me and Floyd coming out of that cave. Okay. That's awesome. All right. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. That was Gerald a few entered more. Sand Cave for his final time. The walls had been reinforced. Let's go. But mud and water was accumulating everywhere. Oh. He waded through it and pressed on past the danger of the sagging ceiling. With determination on his face and a grease gun clutched in his right hand, he scrambled towards Floyd. But before the final squeeze, he stopped. It was all gone. No! The cave ceiling had my crumbled God. once again. Gerald stared motionlessly at the pile. Oh my then God! Then he began to yell. Floyd! A rock disconnected from the ceiling and tumbled onto Gerald's head. Luckily, just a small one. He rubbed his scalp and called out again. Floyd! This time, a moan. It rumbled from the other side. Fearing that his friend was slipping out of consciousness, mm -hmm. Gerald willed himself against the cave, launching the debris behind him with force. He ignored the pain from being struck on the head and clawed at the stone pile. He carried on this way for several minutes until a sharp, heavy rock dropped from the ceiling and landed squarely on his back. Ugh. No more than 15 minutes later, Gerald returned to the surface, defeated. Oh my God, are you serious? Only after the cave did they start to think about all of the things that they could have done. Wait, why didn't we rig a portable telephone line? That would have been incredibly simple here in 1925. Yeah, why have we been running in and out to deliver updates? Why didn't we give him an AM radio? He could have had something to listen to and receive messages of support from the public. Wait, why don't we rig up a tarpaulin so we could lift his torso up so he wouldn't be slowly dying of exposure? Oh God, why didn't we run a feeding tube? That's also a technology we have in 1925. Yeah. All too late. Yeah. Now what? Uh, you know, the one I was gonna I'm gonna wait to the end to talk about some of the things that happened during strategy meetings too. Mm -hmm. Route to get to Floyd is closed forever. That meant two options. Go in through the Number one, capitulation. Right. Surrender him to the cave. Or find another or number way two. in through the other way. Dig down from directly above Floyd. Mm-hmm. Now, the prospect of digging from above seemed almost fanciful. Right. At least it did in the beginning. But luckily, they had some help. Okay. Owing to Miller's reporting, Floyd had become practically the most famous person in the country. Mm -hmm. The rescue had become a high priority for the governor of Kentucky. Ooh. Lieutenant General Denhart enters the scene. Ooh. He's been updated on the situation, and mm -hmm. following shortly behind yeah. him is a small... Yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh. You're not just going to slip this little tidbit in uh -uh. here down at the no. fucking bottom. I'll, I'll start with the first part. He'll go on to murder his girlfriend. He's brought to trial, but it results in a hung jury. Before his retrial, <laughs> Verna's brothers tracked him down and shot him to death. Hold on. They were all acquitted. <laughs> oh my god! My god! But anyways, he's here to save this man from the cave. Thanks a lot. He's been updated on the situation, and following shortly behind him is a small army of miners and engineers. Okay. He declared to the despondent crowd, Gentlemen, I am here on behalf of the governor. The purse strings of Kentucky are open. Oh yeah! Take this blank check and bring that man out Alive. God damn! I love it. That's so motivating, too. Let's do it. No more of this little bullshit I got going on. Floyd in that cold, wet confine could not have imagined the scale of the operation that was going on 55 feet above. Right. Authorities assumed control of Colin's rescue. Denhart gave Henry Carmichael the lead to dig, mm -hmm. and Carmichael raced to get to work. 
he enlisted his employees, his fleet of expensive high-tech machinery. Mm -hmm. Professional groups were brought in from all across the state. Local townspeople That's were awesome. mostly excluded. And for the first time since Collins had been trapped, work was now about to go ahead in a systematic manner. Everyone knew the plan. Yeah. Everyone had something to do. And everyone was working fast. But just as hopes were rising, Don't they were once again dashed me. against the rocks. Mm -hmm. They had all of this state-of-the-art machinery shipped in and assembled by the engineers and rearing to go. Right. And it was all worthless. See, the problem is the cave drew air into it. Oh. These diesel-powered engines pumped out enormous volumes of choking exhaust. Oh, Within a day's operation, on. the cave would be filled with carbon monoxide and Floyd would be would dead die. from asphyxiation. Holy shit. Just as quickly as solutions would arise, the cave would parry them away. What the it fuck? It refused to let this man go. So engineers and miners had wasted hours assembling everything, only to realize that they had to pack it all up and cart it away. Because the digging of a 55-foot shaft by would be done Ugh. with picks oh my, and shovels. Oh my God. Jesus. Well, the locals can come back. Carmichael didn't know much about caves, but he knew a lot about quarrying. And he estimated that his team of 75 volunteers could dig and dredge at a rate of two feet per hour. Oh, that's not so bad. If they worked around the clock, yeah. they would be digging directly into the spot where Floyd lays within 30, 30 hours. hours. Yeah. Now, was it possible that Floyd could survive for another 30 hours? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Let's go. The first ton was moved, and at first it was easy work. Yeah. Just dirt and clay. Carmichael understood well that this was a race against time, mm -hmm. so he watched the men closely, and if they seemed to be slowing down, even a little, they would be yanked out and immediately a new worker subbed in. <laughs> awesome. Nonetheless, the pace slowed. By 10 because feet, the, the shaft rock. narrowed greatly, mm -hmm. which meant that only two men could work at a time. At 15 feet, they hit boulders. Yeah. Pickaxes went in, and a system of pulleys and buckets had to be used to cart the rock out. Tracks were even laid to ferry the refuse to a That's dump site. Excellent. Time passed. Hours passed. Night went to day. The day was hot. Oof. This was yet another problem, yeah. because it's early February, there's tons of ice still in the ground, yeah, but and its exposure it's to the fresh midday sun meant that the walls of the shaft were softening yeah. and the ground becoming sodden. Yeah. The pace of digging Slows. slowed. Fuck. It was now only half a foot per hour. Wow. Most anyone could do was watch helplessly on the sidelines and pray. Interestingly, though, there were a lot of people on the sidelines. Floyd wouldn't have believed that the space above him had turned into a literal Jesus carnival Christ. in his honor. <laughs> Vendors showed up I'm to dope. sell hamburgers, hot dogs, That's and souvenirs. So Families sprawled out over blankets to listen to hymns from local church groups. The local mountebanks sold moonshine and moonshine. miracle cures. There was even a bloody juggler. And old man Lee was there, walking around, shaking his <laughs> jar, and soliciting donations. Hey, but we're doing his thing, bro. Hey, He's a, hey yo, you do what you When you come do. about that cave, one leg, Larry, we finna eat good forever. Boomer and Burden and Miller during all of this. Recovering? Okay, let's back up a bit. Okay. People did not properly understand exactly how oh, Floyd was that. trapped. Uh huh. And the news didn't help much either. This is an actual diagram used. It's been simplified to the point of being totally wrong. And travel on newspapers weren't able to find accurate diagrams published for this wow for the public the obvious question started to arise why hasn't he been rescued yet yeah just clear some gravel or pull a rope how is this so hard right motive was attributed oh, i heard they didn't even want to have him yeah. rescued at all yeah i heard that they're doing all of this for publicity mm -hmm. and lee's activity of soliciting donations remember from before further inflamed rumors i bet floyd isn't even trapped in there these were all real rumors, and they got worse. Oh, wow. You know what? I've heard he comes out at night, and then he just goes back in in the morning. Sir. Other rumors included... I heard that after Floyd went into the cave, someone murdered him. Others said... 
I think they're withholding food and water from him so he dies. Wow. This whole thing is a fraud. As time went on, it was harder and harder to ignore the hoax claims. Then, people started to form righteous mobs, claiming the whole thing was a fraud, and they started to get nasty. In fact, two people even went to the telegraph office and pretended to be Floyd sending telegrams to his mother. See, that's some stuff that's, like, messed up because, you know, like, you're trying to prove that it's not real. But in doing that, people get this warped view that they need to stand up and do it and then just lie about it. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. they can't justify their own suspicions and then they're just completely left out. And that's because, like, the diagram he's showing shows a guy just digging some rock and not explaining the difficulty of it, you know. But if you don't understand how cave-ins work... None of this makes any sense to you. Yeah, at all. It's impossibly small. Yeah. You couldn't imagine how many people are spelunkers in this area. They won't even go in that cave. Yep. You know, so... This is absolutely insane. Here's what it said. (sighs) Quote, Please contradict statements that I am buried alive in Sand Cave. Stop. Tell mother I am all right. Stop. Am coming home. Stop. Floyd Collins. Hold on, we'll play it. Naturally, the AP published these telegrams unquestioningly. Oh my god. And now word is out to the press that he isn't actually in the cave after all. So, like, before it had said... Mm Mm-hmm that his mom had died years prior. Since then, his father, Lee, had remarried a younger woman. Floyd and his stepmother got along well, but he did not see her in a parental way. The Forger had no understanding of their family structure and just went with mother. Yep. That's so fucked. Collins. Naturally, the AP published these telegrams unquestioningly, and now word is out to the press that he isn't actually in the cave Jesus after all. Jesus Christ. That made the authorities look foolish. And it could not go on. So, a hasty court-martial was arranged, and Homer, Miller, and Gerald were summoned. Are you kidding me? They hold one session on Monday and another on Tuesday. Lee and everyone else is cleared of charges. A retraction is written, and things carry on. Okay, and he's still not... Uh, that also shows it's been three more days he's still, he's still not... not Generators rumbled. Pumps churned out water. Men continued working in ships and carrying away the earth. Here they are with strips of lumber to wow. shore up the walls. Yeah. They were only 25 feet down. God. The pace had slowed to four inches per oh, hour. Oh my god. In their desperation, they resorted to no! dynamite. But this did little to the boulders. Despite all these bleak circumstances, people's spirits were high because everyone was keen for their turn to dig. And? Because they had one more thing to latch onto. Uh huh. He is probably still alive. Why? Now, how do they know that? Okay, so remember that light bulb around Floyd's neck? Yeah. Well, it's powered by a simple copper wire. Bare copper wire is subject to very minute fluctuations in resistance. Oh. So, an engineer rigs up a radio amplifier to this wire to read the current and see those small fluctuations. There they were. About 20 per minute. Like a heart The rate beat. of steady breathing. Oh, yeah. As his chest expands and contracts, they can read it from... Oh, that's going to make me cry. God. With the power of science. Thank God. Imagine the level of desperation your mind is at to be like, we have to know if he's alive down there. And this is for one guy. Yeah. That's the mindset I'm in right now. And then this one guy is stuck in a cave and everybody is doing their hardest to save him. I think it's incredible. I love it. I From love it. this device. And so, they kept going. And going. And going. 30 hours was the original estimate. Now 144 hours Jesus. had come and gone, and they were only at 44 feet. Then, rain Are you- yeah, Rain that mixed with dirt to make mud. Yeah. Much of which then froze to make ice. Yeah. Ice which expanded and damaged the integrity of the shaft walls. Mm-hmm. Slowing down with every hour, they continued. Oh my god. Many more hours passed, and they were getting close. But it was now 15 days since Floyd was first stuck in that cave, and people had mostly lost hope. Yeah. That excitement in the newspapers was tempering down. Visitors began clearing out from Cave City. 
Many still held on to hope, but their final lifeline, that light bulb, had burnt out. Oh. And it wasn't possible to do any more readings on the radio amplifier without it. No one knew if Floyd was still alive. Oh my goodness. Another 51 hours would pass before... Jesus. Finally, they reached the 60-foot depth. I'm in. Chisel. A chisel is handed down. At 1.30pm on Monday, February 16th, Sand Cave would open once again. For 17 days, Floyd had been trapped underground, stuck in the same position. Four days without heat or light. Twelve without food or water. But maybe the dripping of the cave water had provided him with some sustenance? There are stories of people surviving harsher extremes. Rescuers frantically tugged at rocks to widen the hole. Everybody stood by, absolutely silent, I, peering I'm into silent. that hole. Oh my God. I'm so... I know. Ed flashed his light into the gap, then eased himself in. Brenner aimed his light around the room, and then, finally, at Floyd. The first thing he saw was a golden shimmer. It was not the light bulb. It was the reflection of Floyd's tooth. His mouth hung open. Mm. He was dead. Mm-hmm. Brenner was helped out of the cave and he delivered the news. Dead. A coroner would later state that Floyd succumbed to exposure and that they had missed him by just three days. About the same Damn. time that the light bulb had gone out. Damn. But what would they do now with the body? The shaft walls were ready to fall inwards, and risking lives to remove a corpse was seen as just irresponsible. So the following morning, officials made a decision. Floyd would be entombed where he lay. The cave would keep its victim. Now this did not sit well with the family, but what could they do? The next day, they planned the funeral. The town emptied of people and the shaft with Floyd at the bottom was refilled with soil. But that's not quite the end of the story. But if you hung on for this long, keep holding on, because things are going to continue to get interesting. I... Take a little break. You okay? Mm -hmm. You hoping he was gonna make it out? Mm -hmm. That's okay. Well, the saddest part to me is that he never knew how hard people were working. Were working, yeah. Up until the time that he died. You know, yeah. he might have thought that after the cave-in, they could have just quit. Yeah. You know, and there'd have been no way. But it, maybe he heard, like, the rumbling above him, though, actually. Maybe. Actually, in the quiet cave, maybe he actually would hear <laughs> them, you know. I just, yeah. Pinging and dinging as they got closer. Yeah. But if they could have talked to him, it's one of those things that like he might have been able to hold on. Exactly. With reassurance, you know. Yeah. They'd have got that phone in there. They would have got a radio in there or something. Any Anything would have been better than him being down there alone. Yeah. You want to take a little break and come back? No, I'm good. I'm ready. Take a little break. It's okay. I'm good. I love you. I don't want you to be so sad. No, put that. Take this. This is done. It's not the mask it. <laughs> oh, I forgot he was green. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. I'm okay. But first, let me do a wrap-up of where everyone is and all that stuff. Context, context. Okay. The Collins family already had financial hardship. Right. Locals saw old man Lee scouring the rescue site for glass bottles. But the owner of the land, B. Doyle, mm. and supposed friend of Floyd, was wholly unsympathetic. He erected a sign on the highway which said... 200 yards away, the body of Floyd Collins is imprisoned in Sand Cave. Then he began charging tourists 50 cents apiece wow. for the opportunity what to a... gander into the hole. It's 100 years later, B's dead. Let's call it even. Okay. Also, Fair. remember those claims of Kentucky being an open purse? Well, the state reneged on <gasps> the deal. They refused to pay many of the rescuers, what? and most of them went home without any compensation. What? Some of them did make some money out of the situation, though. 
They lucked into vaudeville gigs and roamed the country giving their first-person account. Wow. Miller, however, received an astonishing offer, a $50,000 contract God. from the yeah. Chautauqua no. Lecture Center, yeah. equivalent to the better part of a million dollars in today's money. He declined. What? He continued to work at the Louisville Courier Journal. The following year, his coverage of Floyd's story earned him the Pulitzer Prize. Okay. Now, the brother, Homer, he needed money and he agreed to do that vaudeville circuit. He stood on stage and regaled the audience about tales of his brother, their childhood, and the tragedy. Mm -hmm. But Homer made it known why he was up here on stage trying to get money. Mm -hmm. He had a mission. I kept thinking of Floyd lying in the muck where he had suffered beyond our power to imagine. Mm -hmm. I would never have peace of mind if he remained there. He wanted the money yeah. to dig to Floyd dig up, up yeah. and get him out of that cave. A couple of months later, he had it. All right, so back to Floyd. Which he could have had seven. if the guy just would have took that million dollars and he could have just done it immediately, but that's fine. <laughs> 10th, right. 1925. Seven miners showed up to the scene. They began to dig. Within a week, they had arrived at Floyd. And this time, they approached from the other side of the rock formation. That way, they could remove the rock, pinning That's Floyd's why leg. I thought they were going to They be lifted in the him first up place. from his tomb and laid him down on the fresh air above. April 26th, 1925. Floyd was set to rest in the family cemetery. A stalagmite had been set as a headstone to mark out his plot. Sick. And there he lay. For no, that's not actually where it ends. Oh, my God. Okay, this is where it gets Come weird. Come on. Two years later, 1927. There can't be any more twists to this. I'm so Times have been tough aghast. for the cats. So Floyd's dad sold Sand Cave to a dentist named Dr. Harry B. Thomas for $10,000. Okay. Now, Homer begged him not to because at the time the government was starting to buy up tons of land in the mm -hmm. area and turn it into national parks. Yep. They had to pay at a very competitive rate. But Lee was becoming a bit old and senile by this mm. point. And frankly, it's doubtful that he cared about Homer or Floyd or anyone else for yeah. that. It's 100 years later, he's dead now. Let's call it a year. Right. So, right, the point is in this land sale with Thomas, Lee agreed to a very odd clause. And that clause said, everything on that property belongs to Thomas. And should he wish, Get for example, to exhume no! a dead body and re-embalm it and here. put it on display in something really tacky like a, I don't know, a glass coffin Are inside a cave, kidding maybe, me? then that would be his prerogative. Lee signed yes. And Thomas did exactly that. You are kidding Doyle me. Doyle made Floyd's oh corpse a tourist attraction. God. That's right. Two bits of gander, come and wonder at the incredible dead man wow. who died in a cave. But to add insult to injury, it worked. Visitors returned to Sand Cave to gawk morbidly. Oh my at god! Floyd. Within a few months, Thomas had turned Lee's failing farm into a successful business. Ew. That's disgusting. Now, the rest of Colin's family is horrified. Yeah. They try a number of times to get Floyd returned to them, including through the legal system. No, but somehow, you signed a incredibly, contract. the judge ruled in Thomas's favor. And so, there he lay for the next two years. Oh my God! Yeah. That's, That's so body the case guy in it. Was not done with Floyd. Until someone hatched a plan. Two years later, Steal it. it's midnight yeah. Steal it outside Sand Cave. Yeah. Footsteps can be heard rustling through the brush. Now, we don't know who these two men are, but we know why they are here. To rob a grave. Hey. They sneak inside and clamber over the rocks <laughs> in the darkness. Reaching Floyd's casket, they undo the latch and throw open the lid. There is his shriveled body. They throw him in a gunny sack, and they race off into the night. Sick. For 800 yards, they carry dear Floyd, like a couple of sweaty Santas about to deliver a really terrible Christmas present. Oh Panting, out of breath, knowing that they're going to get caught any minute, they reach the Kentucky Green River hillside. There's no time. With a one, two, three, they launch his body towards oh the God. river, and that, Floyd goes sailing is that what we into the air. Wait a minute. Up. Up. Wait a minute. Into the starlit beyond. What? 
Wait a minute. And landing in a bush. What? Oh, God. <laughs> the two men flee what? from the scene. Now, the next morning, Thomas notices that the body of Floyd is somewhat missing. Somewhat. And he contacts the authorities. The police come, they dust the casket for fingerprints, and bloodhounds are given Floyd's oh scent God. and let loose into the hillside. We're still A few hours him. later, yeah. they manage to find him. find him. He tangled up mess near the river. But this time, with a leg missing. That same one that was trapped under they the rock. His wow. leg off. So, despite his protest, it had been amputated. Neither the leg nor the culprits were ever found. And while it would be nice to think that this was some well-intentioned duo no, they just that did this out of the kindness leg. of their hearts that does not to free Floyd, like. it's much more likely that it was an act of vandalism because Floyd was simply too much of a hot tourist attraction. The following day, Floyd was passed back into the cave. Back yep. into his box. And it was covered by a metal lid, surrounded by a metal chain. <laughs> and locked with a padlock. He said, I'm keeping he was my now fucking body. more trapped than he had ever been. That does not look satisfying. That's horrific. This cave had spun fate once again to make sure that its victim would never leave. And so, time passed. Floyd's body would continue to decay. The rot from his body would eventually rot the casket too. Mm -hmm. And every decade or so, it would need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. A few Four years later, caskets. he was no longer on display. But even then, he remained in that box for many more years. In 1961, Floyd's Cave was purchased by Mammoth Cave National Park, and it was closed to the public. There would be no more visitors. Thank the Lord. The entrance itself to Floyd's Cave was closed with a steel gate mm -hmm. and bolted then welded shut. Jesus. But the Collins family never gave up objecting to Collins' body being left in the cave. And here is where the story ends. In 1989, at the Collins' request, the National Park Service ventured into Floyd's cave. Continuing on a more than 60-year tradition, a team of people worked over the course of several days to remove him from the cave. They took him out, left the cave, locked it behind them, and laid Floyd to rest Finally. at the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church Oof. Cemetery. Jesus. After 64 years in Sand Cave, he is now finally at peace. The end. That Thank you to Wendigoon as Floyd. Right. If you don't let me out, I'm going to hire a gang of hitmen to come to your house and kill your family. <laughs> Sumito as Homer. The BTS meal McDonald's bag. That has I'm hungry! Shut the fuck up <laughs> and eat some BTS, bro! Ordinary things as Miller. I'm enthusiastic, but would ultimately dock out the back exit. Rusty Cage as Gerald. Oh, well, hello there. Haven't seen y'all in a while. Welcome to my new home. And many <laughs> kudos as Burden. Hey! Hey, buddy! You right down there? I guess. You're sleepy? I reckon I get. your coffee? Cold and a cup, a cup of Joe? Cup of Joe? A cup of Joseph? <laughs> Okay, Joseph from a little sleepy guy. <laughs> also, by the way, in case you're confused about the channels, this is how it works mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. And do not forget, World of Tanks, yeah! World of Tanks. None of this would have happened if Floyd had got World oh. of Tanks. Man, that was a freaking doozy. <sighs> we had stress, we had drama, a little comedy. The emotional roller coaster that I just went on. We we thought we were gonna do this video, then do plus other videos. <laughs> like, how are we supposed to go from this to anything else? I am actually tired. Yeah. I'm physically tired. I'm tired and I'm very sad. Yeah. It's okay. It's all right. Okay, well, I think it's time for us to get out of here. <laughs> My wife cannot stop crying. It's not tears of joy. Jesus, we did so many good things today. We thought we were gonna enjoy this video. Internet historian has let us down. I wish my wife was a better actor and I can tell you these are fake tears, but we need to get off the internet for a while. No, I'm fine, I'm good. Yeah, you look like it. I love you so much. I'm now concerned, but <laughs> uh, yeah, very stressful story. We don't really watch a lot of real time like drama stuff. You know, so this is uh, intense for us. 
But it was enjoyable. It was an, also an incredible story. I thought I was gonna get to turn him from the sad face to the happy face, and I kept waiting to be able to turn oh, him. Oh, <laughs> and you kept waiting and, and waiting. waiting and waiting, and then you took it off when you realized he's gonna die in that cave. Yeah. Yeah, that was a Once very Once it passed like story. 10 days, I was like, he's not going to make it. Yeah, that's very unlikely. They could have kept him alive anyways if they got him out. Yeah. So. But at least he would have been free. Yeah. And he could have died under the sky. Yeah, I know. Instead of in a cave. That's tough. That's tough to think about, man. But, uh, you know, no risk, no reward, I guess. Uh, stick away in the cave. But, there you go. I think... Other than the fact that it made me very sad, I think that this was really well done. Mm -hmm. The effects of course, were yeah. oh, spectacular. Yeah. Oh. I can cl we can clearly see the work and the effort that the, Internet Historian is the, putting into the these story, videos. The story really takes place at the start. When you sit through and see the depth that he's exactly. at, see what he went through, you know, and then everything builds on top of that. This whole story they're told, now, you, now we are sitting from it like, we feel like experts almost. Yeah. And then now we get to see other people come around watching mm -hmm. after we know the effects that it has. You know what absolutely, I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. People hanging out by the cave, making it more muddy than it needs oh, to be. Oh my God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Them not focusing on the structure of the cave is only something that I've learned hearing about other people being trapped in caves, knowing that if you don't focus on the structure first, you'll cause another cave in doing all that digging. All, you know also something that I thought was really interesting was how there was just this innate trust in the media mm -hmm. so when the media is saying he's in danger he's in danger he's in danger the public's like oh shit like he's in fucking danger we gotta do something right. and then the minute something comes out and the media is like oh hey I'm saying the media newspapers I mean maybe the radios picked it up too but newspapers are yeah. like oh bro it's a hoax everybody's like oh shit it's a fucking hoax but you and know then when they came back out with a retraction mm -hmm. people were like lit mistakes happen yeah i mean that's, that's actually just always been true with every big story yeah you know every big story you hear everybody that's as far away as we are from it you know we just hear about it secondhand you only get whatever they report anyways mm -hmm. so you never get this full part where you get the individual pieces that would make you make a different decision mm -hmm. so you're always looking for a million holes you could poke in it and there's nobody that can give you a good answer one way or another because they yeah. weren't there you know so there's just a natural suspicion so that flux is very natural to people's opinion and people's opinion is just based on their feeling when it's new it's easy to spur them into action and when it's old it's easier for people to get disinterested mm -hmm. you know but one thing now that we've learned about like rescue missions you'll notice people don't rush in first of all especially like cave-ins because mm -hmm. you're thinking well what's been going on that the cave-ins been happening yeah is there a, a deficiency that we need to solve for first because there's no point in us all getting stuck in this hole yeah second of all it's like can we deliver them food and supplies without mm -hmm. actually risking anybody's life yeah you know can we provide for them like give them warmth things like that you know, and then we get to how do we actually get them out? What is going on with the rest of the cave structure? Can we get a map together? Yeah. You know, are there other ideas? You know, going through that patient deliberation first and being like, basically, like, if we go in there and dig and there's going to be a cave in the next day anyways, well, we're going to get him out in a day. He would have been dead either way. So you might yeah. as well go in with the right idea first before you go in and make it worse. It just sucks because if that guy's plan, original plan of 30 hours had worked, like he would have still been alive. Even farther you know? back than that. When they were all passing around what to do, they just would have started digging. They would have probably been got him out. Yeah. If they would have sent somebody instead of just talking about it to go find better supplies. Hey, how, how are we going to get the rock off his leg? Have people dedicated to figuring out how they would do that in a tight space and practice that for hours there, and hours. There was no organization. There was no planning. And then I'm saying, like, that's all they do while we just dig and move rock. If we mm -hmm. set up a pulley system, people that are too scared to get in the cave, if they just reinforce the cave entrance, if they set up food stations. I mean, like, there's just so much that could have been done with all of that time that would have actually led to a higher success. And then been like, basically, like, listen, dude, we have to get you out of here. Amputation's the only way to go. We're not going to waste time. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Period. We're not going to talk about it anymore. Even though an amputation was not even an option, really. How, do, how are you going to get in there to cut his leg off? I mean, you know, you take a little board. You just fucking hammer it down. Cut that shit out. Pull him out. You know, save the man's life rather than sitting around waiting for it. But yeah. at the end of the day, you need manpower. You need things to be moving first before you get there. I think it also really speaks to 
um, expertise. Absolutely. People's areas of expertise. You cannot just have any regular, regular person doing any task. I mean, you, you know can't just I mean? have a guy like, I'm a firefighter and skinny, and let's just pull him out. Right. Like that, you, you can't have, you need to, the first person that they should have been looking for is somebody who has experience with mining or experience with, that's the first the first person that should have been sought out. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, getting back to the video too, like how it was made and stuff, that scene where if like Floyd is like drifting in and out of consciousness and there's that like eyeball in the hands, that shit was fucking terrifying. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that shit, shit was, was awful. Awful, like it's no. gonna be in my nightmares tonight yeah. for sure. I actually paused it and then had to like restart it. I don't know if I even edited that, you might just see me do that. Cause but that was horrific. With that said, um, Incredible storytelling. If there's 11 more of these before the end of the year, I don't know if I can survive, but I'm going to try. Can hey. we get a happy one next time? <laughs> Please? Because between this one and the Costa Concordia, like, I'm not... All right. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I feel like there's got to be some good ones, right? Hopefully, you know, hopefully we get a, another one, but whatever. Uh, maybe I'll just leave you. <laughs> Maybe you should like pre-watch these or something. I know. Let's we'll see y'all around.